currents carry an invisible form of energy that is very important to all of us. Power lines carry electrical energy across the country to our homes. The energy in these lines is very dangerous. Some of these lines carry a huge voltage of 132,000 volts. Knowing this, have you ever wondered how it is possible for a bird to sit on a power line and not be electrocuted? We will answer that question in this lesson by looking at potential difference, or as it is commonly known, voltage. So far we have learned that electric current is the flow of electric charge around a circuit. Now I want you to think of a mechanical system that we can use to compare to an electric current that will allow you to understand it better. I want you to think of a mechanical system that has its own source of energy and is able to transfer that energy to other parts of the machine to create some other kind of effect. I have one that may surprise you, this bicycle. We can compare electric current to a bicycle chain. Think about it. The links are like the charge, the wheel is like the lamp, and the cyclist is the source of energy, like the cell in a circuit. A battery of cells transfers energy to the working parts of the circuit in much the same way as a cyclist transfers energy to the back wheel of a cycle. Look, when I start pedaling the chain rotates. Do you see that every link of the chain moves as soon as I turn the pedals? So the movement of the chain rotates the back wheel. The battery in the circuit, or the electric power supply point in your house, is the source of energy in a circuit. As soon as the cell is connected in the circuit, current passes through the components instantly. Similarly, you can start up different appliances in your house when the switch is turned on. This compares nicely with the cyclist pedaling. When you start pedaling, the chain turns the wheel. We can compare the charge in an electric circuit to the links of the bicycle chain. The links will transfer the energy from the cyclist to the back wheel of the cycle and the wheel will then do work against the road to propel the cyclist forwards. So we understand that electrical current is the flow of electric charge around a circuit. Let's investigate electrical current further on our circuit board. Right, here is my circuit board. Can you see I've got three cells in series, which is connected to a switch and then to a light bulb in series. Now, can you think what's going to happen when I close the switch? Well, correct. Can you see now that the light bulb is glowing? The question is, why does this happen? Well, that's because charge transfers energy to the components in the circuit. Now, look at this animation to understand what is happening inside the conducting wire. The charge is already inside the wires in the form of billions of tiny particles called electrons which are moving randomly inside the metal conducting wires. The electrons move about randomly because they're not being influenced or affected by any other electrical force. But what would happen to the electrons if one side of one of the conducting leads is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the other side of another conducting lead is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and then the switch is closed. The charge is evenly spread throughout the leads. As soon as you close the switch, the source of electrical energy, which in this case is the battery, sets up an electrical field across the conductors and this force field starts to push the charge so that all the charge starts moving at once. Now in which direction would you expect the positive charge to flow? Will it flow towards the positive terminal or towards the negative terminal? Well, positive charge will always flow towards the negative terminal. Do you remember our definition of conventional current? The direction of current is from the positive to the negative terminal of the battery. However, in a metal conductor, the electrons which are negative are really the charges that move. So what really does happen inside that conductor? The electrons are negative and because light charges attract and opposite charges repel, the electrons will suddenly migrate towards the positive terminal. So can you see why we compare a cyclist on a bicycle to an electrical circuit? The direct transfer of energy 
from the cyclist to the back wheel of a cycle is similar in concept to the direct transfer of electrical energy from a battery to the components of the electric circuit. Every link of the chain moves immediately, in much the same way as the charged particles begin to drift through the conductors and to form part of the electric current. The difference, of course, is that in the electrical circuit, the light bulb shines, and in the example of the cyclist, the bicycle moves. In this series, we will continue to explore electrical currents and electrical energy, and we will specifically concentrate on the concepts of potential difference and resistance. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define potential difference and define the volt, which is the SI unit of potential difference. The concept of potential difference deals with how much energy is being transferred per unit charge as the charge moves around the circuit. Now did you get that? Think about it for a moment. As the unit charge passes through the circuit, it is doing work. In other words, energy is being transferred. Let's have a look at a demonstration. The components in a complete circuit, in this case a light bulb, need a power supply for them to work, like this battery of cells. When this battery of cells is connected in a complete circuit, a potential difference is set up across the light bulb. Now why do you think this is happening? Well, units of charge now move through the light bulb, and as the charge moves, energy is transferred to that light bulb. Well, how do we know this? Clearly, the fact that the light bulb is glowing proves that energy is being transferred. In a circuit, we are dealing with the electrical energy of a charge as it moves through that circuit. You know that we measure the current in a circuit using an ammeter. The reading on the ammeter gives us the number of coulombs of charge passing through a point in the circuit per second. But how can we measure the amount of energy that is being transferred per unit charge into other forms of energy? Let's understand this by looking at an animated model of conventional current, which you'll remember is the flow of positive charge. When the battery is connected, a difference in potential energy arises across the light bulb in the circuit. Suppose each of the charge carriers in region A has 12 units of potential energy, and in region B, the charge carriers have two units of potential energy. What do you notice? Well, there is a difference in the values of potential energy across these terminals. One is higher than the other. We say that there is a potential energy difference of 10 units because A has a higher potential energy than B. This is the signal for the charge to begin moving. Now, if we have a potential difference between two points, in which direction will the charge now travel? Will it move from a region of low potential to high potential, or from a region of high potential to low potential? The positive charge moves through the circuit from a position of high electrical potential energy to one of lower electrical potential energy. Because positive charge moves through the circuit from a region of high potential to a region of low potential, we can compare the difference in electrical potential energy to the difference in gravitational potential energy. At the top of a waterfall, the water has higher potential energy, and at the bottom, it has lower potential energy. Water falls down the waterfall because of this difference in a potential energy. In the circuit, charge moves through the light bulb because there is a difference in potential applied across the light bulb. Its electrical energy is transferred to heat and light. Similarly, an electric motor turns when there is a potential difference applied across it. Now let's define potential difference. The potential difference between two points in a circuit is the amount of energy transferred per unit positive charge. V is equal to W over Q, where W is equal to the amount of energy transferred, which is measured in joules. Q is the amount of charge that passes through and measured in coulombs. And V is the potential difference, which is measured in volts. Study this definition carefully 
write it down and make sure you know it. We often abbreviate the words potential difference to PD. The PD or potential difference between two points in electrical circuit is measured using a voltmeter. A voltmeter is connected across the light bulb. Its positive terminal is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal connected to the negative terminal of the battery. This is different to the ammeter. The ammeter measures the flow of electrical charge and is connected in series in the electrical circuit. The voltmeter on the other hand measures potential difference and is connected across the light bulb in parallel. Now let's take a reading using the voltmeter. Here is the voltmeter connected across the light bulb. I'll close the switch and we'll let the reading stabilize and we can see that it's reading 4,48 volts. So what does this reading mean? Well it simply means that 4,48 joules of energy is transferred to the light bulb for every coulomb of charge that passes through it. So using our SI units we can simply say that the potential difference across the light bulb is 4,48 volts. We can therefore say that 1 volt is the potential difference across two points when 1 joule of energy is transferred per coulomb of charge passing through it. 1 volt is therefore 1 joule per coulomb. So how does all that we now know help us answer the question as to why a bird sitting on power lines will not be electrocuted? Well, when there's a voltage or potential difference between two points on a conductor, a current is set up in the conductor. But when a small bird sits on a power line, both feet are in the same line. Therefore, there is no potential difference between its feet. A voltmeter connected between points A and B would read zero volts. In order for a current to pass through the bird, there must be a potential difference applied across its body. Imagine a bird with one very long leg sitting on the power line. If one leg is on the power line and the other leg is on the ground, can you see that there is a potential difference now applied between these two legs? The earth has an electrical potential of zero volts. The power line is maintained at a potential of 20,000 volts. Therefore, there will be a flow of charge from the power line through the bird to the ground and eventually the bird will be fried. Well, that's it for lesson one. In our next lesson, we will learn to calculate the amount of work done by electric currents. Thank you and goodbye for now.